The second thing is, despite the fact we've been told we're an entrepreneurial society, this is a country today that has an utter contempt for skill. You talk to people who dig coal, run trains, doctors, nurses, dentists, tool makers, nobody in Britain is interested in them. The whole of this so-called entrepreneurial society has focused on the city news we get in every bulletin, telling us what's happened to the pound sterling to three points of decimals against a basket of European currencies. Skill is what built this country's strength and it is treated with contempt. I must confess, the auctioning off of public assets, particularly the latest disgusting Frankenstein advertisements which told me more about the mentality of the minister who devised the scheme than it did about the sale itself, these are assets built up by the labour of those who work in electricity and by the taxpayer who put the equipment in, now to be auctioned off at half their price to make a profit for a tax cut for the rich before the next election comes. If these were local councillors, they would be before the courts for willful misconduct. And because they are ministers, and then some of them later go on the boards of the companies they privatise, they are treated as businessmen who know better how to handle it as members of the board of directors than allegedly they did as ministers responsible. Local government has been crippled. Across the river is the London County Council County Hall the uh, set seat of government of the greatest city in the world, empty, to be sold, because the government wanted to cripple local government. And so indeed they have. The poll tax, the centralisation of the business rate, the punishment of the Liverpool and Lambeth councillors was to take all power from local government and put it in the hands of a government that claimed it didn't believe in the role of the state. The undermining of the trade unions with less rights in Britain than they have in Eastern Europe. The tax cuts for the rich and benefit cuts for the poor. The censorship of the media. The abuse by the security services. The restriction of civil liberties. And when we look back on the 1980s, we will see many victims of market forces. I do not share the general view that market forces are the basis of political liberty. Every time I see a person in a cardboard box in London, I say that person is a victim of market forces. Every time I see a pensioner who can't manage, a victim of market forces. The sick who are waiting for medical treatment that they could accelerate by private insurance, they are the victims of market forces. And with the disappearance of the Prime Minister, who was a great ideologue, I mean, her strength was that she understood a certain view of life. And when she goes and she's gone, there will be a great ideological vacuum. And it's open saying we will run market forces better than she did because her whole philosophy was that you measured the price of everything and the value of nothing. And we have to replace that. And uh, I uh, had one uh, experience the other day which confirmed me in my view that she hasn't really changed the thinking or culture of the British people. I don't know how many people travel as I do on trains, but I go regularly on the trains and I see all the little businessmen with their calculators working out their cash flow, frowning people, looking and glaring at each other. Thatcherite trains, the train of the competitive society. But coming back from Chesterfield the other day, the train broke down. And on the, the it wholly changed. Somebody came in and said, I have a cup of tea from my thermos. And then people looked after each other's children. And a young couple called to me and I said, after about half an hour, how long have you been married? Oh, we met on the train, they said. And a woman said, will you get off at Derby and ring my son in Swansea because he'd be worried. By the time we got to London, we were a socialist train. Because <laughs> you can't change human nature. There is good and bad in everybody, and for ten years it is the bad lady and the good that has been denounced as lunatic, out of touch, cloud cuckoo land, extremist and militant. And that's what the party opposite have done. They don't quite yet know. They think it's the retirement of a popular headmistress under circumstances some might regret. Actually, they've killed the source of their own philosophy and opened the way for quite different ideas.